So hello everyone, I'm joined now by Jim Hill of Target Masters in Columbia. And what Jim is gonna do for us right now is he's gonna give us kind of a, a show and tell of the perceived difference between a rifle and an assault rifle. Now, we are a part, KOMU studio is part of Mizzou's campus and firearms are not allowed on campus, but these uh, firearms are unloaded. There's a plug in the chamber and we are doing this strictly for educational purposes. So Jim, with that, I'll let you uh, take it away. Okay. Everybody associates an assault rifle with the looks and all. I think everybody can pretty much figure out this is nothing more than a little rifle for hunting rabbits and squirrels. It's 22 caliber. Has a 10 shot magazine in it, like so. This one here, probably by definition, everybody's calling an assault rifle, right? Okay. What makes these, quote, assault rifles are their looks. They look military. Now, back in Clinton's era, when he decided to put the assault weapons ban in, he pointed these rifles out. That was a point, this was a point, this was a point, the bayonet lug was a point. He allowed you to have two points on the gun. So everybody took the bayonet lug, the flash suppressor off, and still sold the rifle. Now this one here happens to be this rifle in Wolf's clothing. So it's the, it's the same it's caliber. It's the same gun. It's the exact same gun. It's just Woodstock metal armor. So this, so this one, this is not an assault rifle? No. And the ones that these guys are using are not. They're just black rifles and everybody demonizes them. Okay. This gun will do the same thing. I now have a 25 round magazine in it. So looks can be deceiving on that. So right. what then So what then does make an assault rifle an assault rifle? It's a military grade rifle. It'll have a selector switch on it that can make it either fire semi-automatic, bang, 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 or you can flip the switch and go and, and just, go full. Okay, so what we have here is, it's to, to reiterate, it's the same caliber rifle. Mm -hmm. It's just one of them looks a little bit, it looks more impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's the exact same gun. If I wanted to, I can take this stock off, put this one on this one, and turn it into that. Okay, so my next question, it, it kind of a popular uh, topic of uh, debate right now is, why do everyday citizens need assault rifles? Well, again, I'm not gonna call it assault rifle, it's a semi-automatic. Right, uh, just not, not these rifles in um, particular, but why do uh, citizens, well, as, as someone who uh, sells firearms, mm -hmm. why do some citizens uh, feel the need to purchase an assault rifle? Not this, but an actual assault rifle. Well, they can't actually purchase a fully automatic one easily. Okay. And to get a fully automatic firearm, they've been restricted since the 30s. Uh, they banned new manufacture to be sold to the public in 86. You have to go to the federal government, $500 tax stamp, in order to even acquire one. And then you have to find it. And they start on the low end at $5,000 and go to $100,000. So it's not something everybody's going to buy, number one. Now, the guys buy these semi-automatics that look mean because guys like me, we carried one of these in the military. And we like the gun. Uh, there's competitions out called three gun. You use a handgun, you use a shotgun, and you use a tactical type rifle like this. And it's all for competition. A lot of guys use these type rifles when they go out to the Dakotas to shoot prairie dogs because they can get a lot of firepower. So tr a true assault rifle isn't as common as people think. They no. see something like this and they, they assume it's yeah, an assault because rifle. Because it looks like a military gun. And so when you were saying, could you explain just a little bit more those, um, the kind of the more stipulations on fully automatic uh, firearms. You said it's been, is that, a, is that a state rule or is that federal. a federal? That's, That's federal feds. law? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the feds and the state just, the feds control fully automatic firearms, which this is not. They control the suppressors on the guns. You know, some people call them silencers, but okay. they're suppressors. Uh, Missouri just made the suppressors legal probably about four years ago. Before that, you couldn't have one in Missouri. But federally, you could get a fully automatic rifle. Now, you have to go through the sheriff's department and get his signature on things. You have to be fingerprinted. You have to make application with the federal government. $500 tax stamp on it. You have to wait probably six months to a year. And you are required, if you have a fully automatic firearm, it has to be locked in a gun safe and is subject to inspection at any time. And how, what does that inspection look like? What, what authority inspects that? Is it? Uh, the feds. The feds? Mm hmm Okay. So now another question I have. So the main gun we're hearing about in the news right now is the AR-15. Mm -hmm. Is that truly an assault rifle? No. Not the it's ones not. that they're using. It's a look-alike. Okay. It's a semi-automatic look-alike, like the military's. Okay, so the, the AR, are there AR-15 models that are assault rifles or is the AR-15 model, is that not an assault rifle? 
the AR originally was the Armalite rifle and it was always a semi. The original rifle that was fully automatic was called the M16. And it was originally made by Colt. Okay. All right, well, Jim, thank you very much for uh, showing us the difference here and shedding a little bit of light on this issue. You're welcome.